Hey all and welcome back to our little channel. Now in this video I'm going to turn my attention to arguably the most mundane task in any self build and that's finishing off the side loading and rear doors. So if you're intrigued to see how I've decided to tackle ours then please stick around. First things first, if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while and you've enjoyed the build series so far and you've been looking forward to the next video, apologies for my two month absence, but I've had illness, I've had injuries and I've had a change of job to contend with, so I just haven't been able to get out into the van. And if you're new around here, just a little bit about our channel. We're turning an old tatty panel van into a cheap and cheerful camper van and we're documenting the whole of our build series here on YouTube. So if you're interested in following along with the journey, then please consider subscribing. But anyway, doors, let's get unfinished. We, let's just crack on with it, shall we? This video shouldn't be very long because basically how we've decided to tackle our inner doors, we've covered the processes in previous videos, so I don't want to take up too much of your time with waffle. I'll just quickly show you how we're going to tackle them, I'll talk you through the thought processes involved and then of course right at the very end of the video I'll show you the finished article. So the very first thing that I was going to tackle was going to be the door shuts and as you probably well know by now I've painted the outside of the van but rookie mistake I neglected to do the door shuts. So before I was going to finish off the inside of the doors I decided to tick this job off the list first. To do that, I tackled it in exactly the same way as I approached painting the rest of the van. And that work was given a good clean with some warm soapy water before being rinsed off. I then flat it back with some 400 grit sandpaper and then gave it a clean again. And then once everything was all dry, I gave it a wipe down with some alcohol wipes to remove any residue. With the prep done, I painted everything using the same Estonian combi colour that I used on the rest of the van. Rather than use a roller, my weapon of choice was to use a small brush to get into all those nooks and crannies. And whilst the finish isn't quite as good as using a roller, it's certainly good enough for me. There's still a couple of areas where I need to do a bit of cutting in, but I'll tackle that when I get the third and fourth coat down on the rest of the van. With the painting partially taken care of, I'm going to make a start on the inside of the doors. And to do that, I'm just going to carpet them because one, it's light, it doesn't weigh a great deal. Two, it's, it'll hide a, a multitude of sins. And three, through previous experience, we now know that if you take your time with the carpeting, you can achieve a really nice finish. So that's what I'm going to make a start on now. Where I could, I removed any fixtures and fittings just to try and make life easier when it came to fitting the carpet. All of the metal work was then cleaned with alcohol wipes. I took some loose measurements of the doors, applied them to the carpet and then went to work with some scissors. You do, Mel. If you're thinking about carpeting your own van and there's only one thing that you take away from this video, let it be that when it comes to using the spray adhesive, make sure that you cover both the metal work and the carpet. There's so many videos on YouTube where you see people just spraying one surface and that's just not how contact adhesive works. I hope you can see that I'm certainly no expert when it comes to carpeting vans, but even with my limited experience, I can achieve a really nice finish. And if I can do it, anyone can. I cut the carpet about two mil proud of the window trim, and then using a butter knife and a small hook sculpting tool, I took the carpet underneath. That taken care of, I cleaned up the overspray using some more alcohol wipes. There you have it guys, that's our rear doors all carpeted now and personally I think they look absolutely fantastic. They certainly look so much better than they did do anyway and uh, there's a couple of little loose ends that I need to tidy up here and there but for the most part they're finished and what I need to turn my focus to now is the side loading door. Unfortunately I've run out of carpet, I've had to pop onto eBay and order some more and I know I said earlier that carpet's cheap and cheerful <laughs> but 
since last ordering some it's crept up £10 in price but unfortunately I can't do anything about that needs must so I've bit the bullet and I've ordered some more online and as always what I'll do is I'll throw a link down in the description so if you do want to check out exactly what it is that we've used uh, you know where it is so another thing that I've taken care of while um, everything's all been slackened off all the bits and bobs up there is I had an issue with the rear doors where they didn't shut properly so I put the bolts back in and uh, didn't fully tighten them and uh, just pulled it pulled it to and made sure that it was all locking nice and tight and uh, tightened everything up and that's all sorted now but what I'm going to do now while I'm waiting for that carpet to arrive from eBay is I'm going to turn my focus to sorting out the inserts so I need to pop out pick some wood up cut some templates and then uh, we can cover those and then screw those screw those in place and um, originally because like I say we're going to have inserts on there I was going to cut all that carpet out and completely remove it but I've decided to leave it just as it is and if you ever do need to access behind there I'll just remove the insert cut a slit in the carpet and then poke my hand in and sort out, sort out whatever it is I need to sort out but yeah let's pop out and pick ourselves up some more ply So I've opted to use a 5.5mm ply because for me it's the best compromise between strength, weight, thickness and most importantly cost. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some measurements in the back of the van, I'll apply those to the plywood and then I'll cut it all out with a jigsaw. Whilst I was making the inserts for the doors, I decided to replace the plastic trim at the back of the van where the rear light clusters are and also make a headboard for the bed. My thoughts being that if everything had a uniform finish, it'd just tie everything together nicely. It was whilst making the inserts that the extra carpet decided to make an appearance, so I put them to one side and then set about finishing off the side loading door. As you can see, the carpet's now turned up for the side loading door, so I've got that all covered now. And I tell you what guys, it was a right pig of a job to do. In hindsight, I, I would have been better off just taking the door off, fitting the carpet and then putting it back in place. But I decided to try and fit it all in situ and just getting into all those nooks and crannies. It was quite problematic at times, but I got there in the end and it's all covered now and it's all neat and tidy. Now, you're probably saying to yourself that that's all well and good. It's all neat and tidy, but it's a little bit boring, isn't it? And I completely agree with you. So what I'm going to do to combat that is, just as with the rear doors, I'm going to create a couple of inserts for the top and the bottom, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So whilst I've been waiting for the carpet to arrive, I've been measuring up around the van and I've cut roughly to shape and size all of the inserts and all that I need to do now are just round off the corners to follow the profile of the metalwork behind the carpet. And to do that, what I've been doing over the last few days is I've been collecting from around the home a selection of lids. And I'm hoping between all four of those, we'll have something that fits that rounded edge perfectly. And then it's just a case of transferring that to the plywood and cutting it out with a jigsaw. And before we think about covering it all over, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a test fit just to make sure everything fits perfectly and everything looks right and all being well if that's the case then we can think about getting it all covered the corners were marked out and cut out with a jigsaw and then i gave everything a tickle with some sandpaper just to smooth out all the edges <laughs> now i've opted to use self-drilling self-tapping screws to secure the inserts to the van Everything was neatly and uniformly marked out to make sure that the screws would go into the wood and straight into the metal. And of course folks, when working with solvent, don't forget to wear your pussycat face masks. They're scientifically proven to offer more protection and because I'm telling you this on YouTube, it must be true. Now, 
because the dog bone turned out so well, we decided that we weren't going to reinvent the wheel and that we'd just follow the exact same process for the door inserts. So off score went to eBay and a few days later some Hessian coffee bean bags rocked up at the door. To make sure that we didn't damage the Hessian, we wiggled some pins through the screw holes to try and separate the wadding to make sure that the screws didn't snag and then we followed the pins back through with the screws. It was then just a simple case of screwing the finished inserts back into the van. However, to avoid the potential discomfort of screws in our backs, we decided to use heavy duty velcro to secure the headboard. Here we are, here's the finished article, and arguably the biggest pro to carpeting the insides of your doors is that you don't have to worry about any condensation forming on any bare metalwork. So there you have it all, that's how we've decided to finish off the inside of our camper van with regards to the side loading door and the rear doors. Just throw around a bit of carpet, make some ply inserts, cover them in wadding so they've got a nice padded touch and then finish those off with some Hessian coffee bean bags. It's a relatively cheap, most definitely cheerful way of finishing off the inside of your camper van and I can appreciate it probably isn't to everybody's taste but I'm hoping that there's a few of you out there that just like us think it's a really nice way to finish things off. If you've enjoyed this video please throw us a thumbs up to support the channel and I quickly want to say a huge thank you to all of our regular subscribers who over the last couple of months have been asking questions like where have you guys gone, when are you coming back, when's the next video coming out? Honestly guys I can't put into words just how much we appreciate your support but anyway moving on next video we'll be tackling the high level cupboards and fingers crossed that video comes out sooner rather than later and all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for swinging by our little channel and until next time guys take it easy stay safe and fingers crossed we'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video then please give us a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more and you haven't done so already then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell down below so you know exactly when we put up a new video until next time guys, take it easy, stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.